In the Song Wan Jong bribery scandal investigation, prosecutors are looking into suspicious funds South Gyeongsang Governor Hong Jun Pyo used in a 2011 primary election. The investigation into former Prime Minister Lee Wan Koo is also gaining speed. Prosecutors may summon him as early as this week. And Representative Yoon Sang Hyun met with North Korea's Kim Jong Nam, the North's nominal head of state, at a ceremony marking Russia's victory in World War II. Hello and welcome to News Today on KBS World. It's Monday, May 11th. I'm Luke Clary. Prosecutors investigating the late Sung Wan Jong scandal have discovered a deposit of over 100,000 U.S. dollars by an unknown source in the bank account of South Gyeongsang Province Governor Hong Jun Pyo in 2011. Prosecutors are trying to determine whether this could be related to the cash that late Sung Wan Jong said that he gave Hong around the same time. The special team investigating the late Song Wan Jong scandal have found over 110,000 U.S. dollars in the bank account of South Gyeongsang Province Governor Hong Jun Pyo that he used in the 2011 primaries when running for chairman of the then Grand National Party. The investigators are now trying to find out the source of the money in question. The prosecutors have confirmed that over 110,000 U.S. dollars were deposited into Hong's bank account on June 23, 2011 by himself. At the time, Hong was an assemblyman. On the same day, the money was used as a donation that all candidates running for party chairman had to make. When Hong was summoned on May 8, the prosecutors grilled him over the source of the money strongly believing that it has something to do with the $92,000 the late Song claimed he had delivered to Wong at the time of the party primaries. In his interview with KBS, Hong said that the money was wired legitimately from his political and personal bank accounts and that he would explain its source. The prosecutors plan to indict Hong this week after finding out the source of the money in question and summoning people close to Hong. A prosecutorial probe into former Prime Minister Lee Wan Koo is also gaining speed. Prosecutors may summon the former Prime Minister who resigned in the wake of the Song Wan Jong bribery scandal as early as this week. A special prosecutorial investigation team summoned and questioned three or four witnesses on Sunday in relation with its probe into allegations that former Prime Minister Lee Wan Gu received illicit funds of approximately 27,600 U.S. dollars. Prosecutors are said to have obtained detailed testimonies regarding when and where the former Prime Minister met the late Gyeongnam Enterprises Chairman Song Wan Jong during the by-election campaign in the constituency of Puyo and Changyang in 2013. A prosecution official said that the investigation team has almost completely retraced the late businessman's actions in connection with the former prime minister and that the investigation is progressing as scheduled. Prosecutors again summoned and questioned two figures, identified by their surnames Yo and Kum, who are known to have accompanied the former prime minister when Song visited his campaign office in Puyo. Regarding suspicions that the former prime minister's camp attempted to conciliate witnesses who are testifying against him, prosecutors plan to summon E's secretary, surname Kim, this week. With probes of related figures reaching their final stages, the prosecution is considering whether to summon the former prime minister as early as this week. Representative Yoon Sang Hyun met with the chairman of North Korea's Presidium of the Supreme People's Assembly, or North Korea's ceremonial head of state, Kim Jong Nam, at a ceremony marking Russia's victory in World War II. The meeting has drawn particular attention because it comes at a time of escalating military tensions between the two Koreas. The Russian media have captured images showing South Korean presidential envoy Yoon Sang Hyun speaking to North Korea's ceremonial leader Kim Jong Nam at a commemoration marking Russia's victory in World War II. The two were also spotted moving around together. 
Yoon said later that he had chances to speak to Kim on five occasions during his visit to Russia. 남북 관계의 진전을 위한 우리의 의지와 진정성에 대해서 얘기하려고 노력을 했습니다. When posing for cameras at the ceremony, which was attended by dignitaries from over 20 countries, Yoon stood right behind Kim. After a military parade in Red Square, Yoon and Kim continued their conversation on their 45-minute trip to the Kremlin. Yoon said that Kim responded by saying inter-Korean ties can get better if both sides act genuinely, adding the two Koreas should halt their conflict and work toward peace and unification. Most traffic accidents can be attributed to speeding. And in particular, careless driving on a rainy day can end up with fatal results. Here's a recap of some hair-raising moments on the road caught on camera. Let's take a look. A large bus runs on a quiet road. As the bus is about to enter an intersection, a passenger car traveling at a high speed appears from the right and fails to slow down, crashing into the side of the bus. The giant bus collapsed helplessly on its side, and the front of the passenger car was seriously damaged. A passenger car runs at a high speed on a rainy urban expressway. As it comes across a standing car, the driver attempts to change lanes, but to no avail. After the crash, the car spun around and narrowly escaped a second crash with another vehicle. In the late afternoon on a rainy day, Cars drive slowly in the darkness. A passenger car passes them in a flash. Briefly thereafter, it slips on the wet road and loses balance, colliding with the barrier. Speeding drivers threaten not only their own safety, but the safety of other drivers on the road as well. The number of people suffering from attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, also known as ADHD, has been on the rise every year. It seems teenagers are hit hardest by the affliction. This boy has a hard time sitting still and keeps walking around. He repeatedly opens and closes the door. Those are the symptoms of ADHD, or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. This woman sought medical help for her 13-year-old son because of behavioral problems that began three years ago. A survey conducted by the National Health Insurance Service showed that in 2013, the number of ADHD patients surpassed 58,000, surging 12 percent in just five years. Most of the patients were teenagers, accounting for 66 percent of all patients. Teenagers are particularly prone to stress due to academic and peer pressures. Their symptoms are also easy to detect during group activities at school. ADHD, which usually begins in early childhood, can last into adulthood if left untreated at an early stage, causing problems in the social lives of patients. Experts say that the right medication and guidance from parents and teachers are essential to help children suffering from ADHD. More than 10 million foreign tourists visit South Korea each year. Now, it's good news, of course, but areas near popular tourist destinations in downtown Seoul are often overrun by illegally parked tourist buses. In front of a shopping center in the Dongdaemun neighborhood of Seoul, tourist buses form long lines and even block a bus stop. This forces metropolitan bus passengers to walk up to the middle of the road to catch and board their buses. A street in front of Gyeongbokgung Palace, another popular tourist destination, resembles a parking lot with dozens of tourist buses. As tourist buses occupy a full lane in each direction, other cars are stuck in a traffic jam. Drivers of tourist buses say that it is unavoidable as they must frequently load and unload tourists. Up to 780 tourist buses a day operate in Seoul. 
but there is only enough parking space to accommodate 570 tourist buses, leaving some 200 with nowhere to go. Some have voiced opinions that South Korea should follow the example set in cities abroad, banning tourist buses from entering downtown areas and encouraging tourists to use public transportation. For many families, cats and dogs have become more than just pets. They're full-fledged family members. But taking care of your pets is a lot of work. So IT technology has come along to lend a helping hand and help you look after your canine and feline companions. Kim kyung hwan has a cat at home. When he's at work, he worries about how his pet is doing at home all day long. Now he can put his mind at ease with a home surveillance system linked to his smartphone. This device allows him to check on his cat whenever he wants, even when he's not home. There is even a smart collar that checks a pet's health conditions. It's equipped with a motion sensor to notify the owner of the dog's activity level, sleeping hours, and calorie consumption through the smartphone. Recently, a new TV channel dedicated to playing music or videos just for dogs was launched. Given these trends, Korea's market for pet-related items is projected to top almost 4.6 billion U.S. dollars by 2020. Hollywood superhero flick Avengers Age of Ultron is fast approaching the 10 million mark in ticket sales. It's the fastest grossing foreign movie in Korea, but some criticize the American action blockbuster for monopolizing the screens. Avengers Age of Ultron is nearing the 10 million mark in ticket sales. The second movie in the Avengers franchise has posted a record 98% advanced ticket sales rate and has almost monopolized the screens in Korea. In the first week of its release, the Avengers sequel was shown on an average of about 1,700 screens daily, nearly 80% of all screens in Korea. This figure is five times higher than for Korean film Salut d'Amour, which came in second place in accumulated ticket sales during the same period. The sweeping success of Avengers implies a slump for Korean movies. Theaters claim that they're simply meeting moviegoers' demands, but Korean film producers either lost out on screening opportunities or had to postpone the release of their movies. The question is whether to protect the Korean film industry and the audience's right to choose or to follow the principles of the market economy. The phenomenal success of Avengers Age of Ultron has reignited this long-standing screen monopoly debate. About 70% of elderly couples aged 60 and older in Korea do not live with their children. And it's against this backdrop in which several hundred so-called silver towns are up and running across the country. Today, we have tips on choosing the right one for you and your parents. Silver towns are one alternative people may choose for leading a stable life post-retirement. They refer to a residence facility in which seniors aged 60 and above gather together to lead independent lives without government support. Silver towns exist in many different variations. First, by location, there are pastoral towns situated in rural areas. Others are found in cities or in the suburbs. By ownership, there are rental towns versus homes you can purchase just as you buy an apartment unit. Then what about monthly costs? To enter a silver town, you need a deposit and monthly living expenses. 
The deposit will differ by residential conditions, floor space, and daily facilities. Living expenses include various utility fees and charge for meals and using town facilities. The top-notch, highest-rate silver towns require deposits of some $640,600 with monthly costs of close to $2,800. Silver towns typically located in city suburbs with deposits of about $183,000 and higher will cost around $900 to $1,400 a month for living. What should people consider when choosing the best silver town to meet their needs? Your budget and town facilities are important, but first and foremost, you need to examine if the place is somewhere you can settle in and adjust well. <laughs> 그리고 모든 것이 갖춰져 있고 그러니까 내가 마음대로 활동도 할수 있고 혼자 있는 것보다 여러 사람들이 있으니까 친교도 될것 같아서요. Also, during talks with town officials, closely examine factors such as transportation, location and sample menu of the cafeteria, distance to the closest general hospital and overall amenities in the town community. It's also important to study the town's emergency measures and whether a general hospital is located within a one-kilometer range. Post-retirement life is a growing concern for people these days living in a centenarian era. Hopefully, a wide variety of silver towns can serve the diverse needs of the growing clientele. Now let's take a look at the markets, followed by the world weather. And that's it for this edition of News Today. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again at the same time tomorrow. Goodbye.